And now it's time for What's Hot. We talk about stories that have all of us talking. And today we're joined by John Ann Willow from Third Coast Digest at thirdcoastdigest.com. And Jeff Wagner is back. Researchers at Berkeley say a person's wealth affects their behavior, especially when it comes to making ethical choices. The study also found upper class participants are more likely to lie and cheat when gambling. They did an interesting study with a jar of candy that they said were for children, and they found that the upper class and the elite took more out of that jar <laughs> than others. Well, and that's not all they did either. They did a, a self-guided gambling test where they said that the higher your score was at the end, you could the person with the highest score would win a cash prize, but they let you self-report. And so they also found that people with higher with higher incomes and higher up in the social echelon reported higher scores that were that were wrong that were that they lied about more often there were a number of things in there there were traffic patterns and people who blew stop signs and pulled quickly into intersections and it was a really it was a really uh, diverse and interesting study of uh, social privilege did okay. you believe it well, I, did I believe it I read the same test results that you guys read yeah. and I'm I took the data as empirical <laughs> well, okay here, here. I, I have trouble with the whole premise because all you have to see is the headline University of California Berkeley oh, please. okay this is one of these studies by these tree hugging latte sipping um, <laughs> elitists <laughs> academia oh, and, ac who, and uh. my question is how many tax dollars were spent on this silliness um, this idea that okay, if you have money, if you are one of that evil one percent, you're much likely to, much more likely to lie and cheat and steal. Give me a break. So well, you're saying that the source isn't credible. That's what I'm saying. I Whenever see. you say it, it, now, <clears throat> now when you see this, I mean, when I saw it, University of California, Berkeley. Because uh -huh. let, let's let's face it, if you took a map of the United States and you shook it, most of the loose marbles would end up rolling to the University of California, Berkeley. That's well, let's so talk 1969. About the premise of it, yeah. I mean, do, you, do you think <laughs> it applies, or you're just throwing it out because of its? Source. I'm throwing it up for a source, but I don't think the premise applies yeah, either. Yeah. I don't buy this idea that because people are successful as measured by wealth, that that means that they're more likely to cheat or lie. I just don't think that that's true. I think I, Goddard says you're the one taking all the uh, Tootsie Rolls out <laughs> of his uh, office. No, I don't even though. eat those anymore. Well, I can, <laughs> I, can you, I, can give you, I can give you some anecdotal experience. Um, I was a server and a bartender for, through college and work, growing up working in my family's restaurants, and then I owned a restaurant later. And I, we did find almost uh, fairly consistently that people of privilege tip a lot less and are less um, flexible. If service was slow, they're less polite to the people around them. We, uh, we, we found that was, was pretty much the so same across the board. So they're stingy and more demanding is what you're saying? <laughs> well, you know, and I don't know if that makes them lie or cheat, but maybe they see themselves as having a different place in society as the people who perceive themselves to be, you know, just one of the people. All right, we'll have to leave it at that. Coming up next, many people are outraged over a greeting card poking fun of Whitney Houston. The outcry, even though it was made before her death. What's hot? And again, we're joined by John Ann Willow from Third Coast Digest and Jeff Wagner of News Radio 620 WTMJ. Well, Bank of America back at it again. They could try to impose new fees. Last fall, a huge public outcry stopped the bank from charging a monthly $5 fee for debit card purchases. If the new fees take effect, there would be ways for customers to avoid them. But after the outrage just a few months ago, will customers let this happen? I don't, I don't even know why they would contemplate going there. I mean, I would think the second time around, the outrage is going to be even worse. And it's interesting, too, because the fees they're proposing this time are a lot higher. They're 6 to $9 a month just on basic checking accounts. Oof. I know. And the only way you can avoid it is to either use a credit card from Bank of America or refinance your home or take out a loan. So the only way to get out of the fee is to, you know, to do more interest-bearing business with uh, the Bank right. of America. Well, except, now, John Ann, I yes. mean, the, the option, though, is you, you can go somewhere else. Absolutely. And, I, was, and that, I was just yeah, getting that's to that. See, that's the great did. thing about the free market. I mean, Bank of America, which is the second biggest banking operation in the country, that's great. Let them do it. But the reality is, with all the different options, whether it's your local savings and loans, your, you know, your, your local banking institution, or all the internet banking stuff that's out there now, let them do it. The free market will take over because other places mm -hmm. will come up and say, hey, we want your business. Business, free checking. Let's go with it. Yeah, and a lot of people already did. I mean, credit unions really yeah. benefited from this, you know, the right. whole wave of people that left after uh, BOA right. tried and, the and, first time. And speaking
speaking of that, I actually see this as a potential market opportunity yep. right now where you could see more regular people just dealing with the in and out of, ca of daily cash flow and less with big time investing opportunity, switching to more community based banking, which is very good for local communities. It puts it keeps more money in the community. It keeps cash flowing to small businesses, to auto dealerships, and and it really gets used where it's deposited. Yeah, and I don't understand Bank of America's right. thinking here. I mean, there are a lot of ways for this company to make money, and right. I think it can make money. I don't know why they have to go after people who have simple checking accounts and banking accounts. All well, right. maybe because they think that they're not going to bail on them. Well, and I it's not as easy as wrong. it used to be. I mean, because you got to right. change a lot, so they're counting on people. That, but if you see that thing come up every month, oh, yeah. you know, month to it's month, an, it's enough to motivate you to it, do the it really work. Is. Change. Right. All right, third you. topic, guys. A greeting card targets the late Whitney Houston, and Target made the decision to pull the card. It said, "Next time you think of dating the bad boy, consider Whitney Houston." That's all I'm going to say. We do want to point out the card was actually designed before the singer's death. Should Target have pulled it? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, there's absolutely no reason why they shouldn't have pulled it. If it was bothering people and it was in poor taste, which it was, um, it was it could have been considered funny when Whitney Houston was a recluse and then the story was murky, but it's all pretty clear now. And if they didn't want to pull it, they didn't have to, and their choice to was well within their rights. Yeah, I think before her death, I mean, you, you can argue it might have been funny or whatever, but you know, then it's always that issue <clears throat> after she passed away, boom, I, I think most reasonable people would agree it's in bad taste. At that point in time, you know, you pull it off. That's always the issue you face. When is too soon? You know, yesterday we were talking about the, the Dahmer tours, you know, people trying to oh, push God. that. A lot of people think it's in bad taste. I agree with that. And a lot of people still think that's too soon. You always have to try to figure out what, what's the time. Well, and, you know, her family's already done enough by televising her funeral on the internet <laughs> and allowing pictures of her and her casket to be everywhere. Um, I guess if, if, a, if a large corporation corporate yeah. institution like Target wants to be the first one to pull back, then, you know, that's great. Yeah, this it's, seems to be a no-brainer. I mean, Target said, Who would know, buy a card like right, that? Well, that's the thing. Yeah. Well, the, right after her death. Right, who would buy that card? Who would yeah. buy a copy of The Inquirer with a picture of Whitney Houston in her casket on the cover? I had no idea that was out there. Yeah, I saw it at the grocery store <laughs> oh the other day. Fair Awful. point. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> Yeah, but I always walk by those and I say, look at all the news we're missing these days. But uh, I'm like, wow. They're scooping us. Really? That happened? So, uh, all right, Where guys. did that three-headed love child <laughs> exactly. come from? Exactly. How come we missed that story? Right. right. And it was that, right that here was, in Milwaukee. Yeah, it was <laughs> Jeff, wasn't it? <laughs> oh. All right. Bring those Tootsie Rolls back, Jeff. Right. Goddard's still managing. All right. <laughs>